Well, that's Reveille. <laughs> that's the call to, hey, wake up, <laughs> you know? And uh, that's a lot of what we have to do today. Things are not good. We're kind of in the dark. Uh, we're kind of sleeping through it. We need to wake up, get going, get smart, do the right things. And more importantly, be the right kind of people. And uh, that's a little bit about what we want to do with interesting ideas. So we are grateful for your presence on uh, what we call in the United States, where I'm broadcasting from. This is one of those weekends, one of those holidays that most countries and cultures and civilizations have. Is uh, This is the weekend. It's called Memorial Day in which uh, we honor those people throughout our history who uh, have died in the defense or in the wars or in the conflicts or in the uh, service of defending our country. Those men and women who we then call veterans, they have served in the armed forces and in the auxiliary forces uh, for that. And uh, obviously, by the hundreds and by the thousands and many times by the millions, their lives were cut short. And that's what you really have to be thankful for and grateful for, for you. I was thinking about that today because um, uh, three of my good friends, who would be my advanced age and stage if they were still here, um, lost their lives in the war in Vietnam. And uh, they didn't even have a chance to live anywhere near fully adult lives. They, they were, had really just become, uh, you know, not only boys, they had just become young men and barely when they died in combat. So those are some of the things we remember on Memorial Day, and I usually want to try and take time to do a little bit of that. But uh, I don't want to dwell on that today. I simply want to encourage you, because you have the gift of life, to perhaps think about it in a couple different ways. On uh, this Memorial Day, and uh, wherever you are, you can always be thankful for those people who've served you well and perhaps protected your homeland and the uh, way of life that you love and uh, are grateful for, and you should be. But uh, maybe some things we can think about that. I'm Stan Houston. The program is uh, Interesting Ideas, and sometimes they're inspiring and inquisitive. Sometimes they're intelligent. Uh, sometimes they're not so good. But for the most part, we try and see if we can help you live a little better life, which is what most people want to do. I'm Stan Houston. That's the program for this uh, holiday weekend coming up shortly. <laughs> it begins right now. And of course, uh, I mean shortly because I'm going to keep it reasonably short. Uh, those of you, particularly in my part of the world, uh, this, after all of the COVID stuff, and finally it has been declared officially over in the United States, as a result of the fact that there was this lockdown, and uh, many of you had similar things in your part of the world, uh, we're finding out that probably wasn't the best way to do it, or certainly we didn't handle it in the best way. But uh, now that's fully over, and because of that, uh, people who couldn't travel, didn't have the ability to travel, or because of other things, it is reported that uh, because this is a full holiday weekend, and they do that on purpose, you know, you can kind of take Friday off early, and then uh, the holiday is on Monday, so if you do it right, you can kind of make it into, you know, a Monday, a Sunday, Saturday, Friday, and maybe Tuesday morning holiday. And a lot of people want to do that. And so they say that the highways and the byways and the airways will be full, <laughs> full of people 
trying to enjoy the holiday. And of course, as a result of that, some of them are not going to enjoy it nearly as much because of the uh, traffic jams that uh, will take place. So uh, some of us, like my wife and I, we have decided that uh, we will travel by being home and uh, call our friends and call our children and call our family and kind of meet that way and uh, then arrange some times where when there's less traffic, we will get together. And I'm sure that most of you are smart enough to do just that too. And for those of you who love it so much and you're going to travel, best and blessings to you. Be careful, be safe, be prayerful, uh, and it, uh, may, the, may the travel go well for you. Uh, here's the deal. What I do oftentimes is I use Memorial Day because it, in many ways it starts what we call, at least in North America, the summertime. All right, you know, finally the uh, winter is fully done, the spring has arrived, and uh, it's uh, gradually and maybe quickly going to be the uh, sunshine and the uh, heat of summertime. Good old summertime in which a lot of people take special holidays and vacations. Uh, oftentimes the schools are no longer in session during the summer. And so people l live a different style of life in the months of uh, June, July, and August. Kind of the good old summertime. Well, because we're doing that, I oftentimes say uh, on Memorial Day, well, I'm kind of relaxing. Uh, I get my notebook and... Uh, I think, okay, now uh, how do I want uh, the summer to be not only restful, uh, but how can I make it useful? And uh, what should I be doing differently as uh, we come into the halftime of the year? Uh, I usually use it as a time to uh, do a little personal reflection as well as Thanksgiving. Like I said, you know, here we go. Bill, common name, David, common name, Jeff, common name. But uh, for me, all three of those names have last names attached to them, friends I knew who uh, did not make it back from the war in Vietnam. And everybody has those names and those stories, so sometime... Just be thoughtful, and of course, it is oftentimes called Decoration Day because part of the way it oftentimes was done even more so when I was young, but it still is, we go out and we decorate the graves of those who have passed on. And uh, it's not done nearly as much as it used to. Uh, this has kind of become more of a four-day weekend uh, holiday, but still within that weekend, within the day, uh, a number of people keep to the good tradition and organizations go out and make a special point of honoring at least the memory of those people. Well, what I also do is sometimes I take what I call <laughs> the uh, cracks and crap exercise. Now, you've never heard of that before, but it's uh, maybe it's a little crude, but it's something that I have uh, used a lot in my coaching in working with people because one of my mentors once said, please keep in mind, there's something wrong with everything. Nothing works all the time. And he was a brilliant organizational uh, family therapist, uh, consultant, psychologist. Uh, he, he was brilliant in the sense that he was very, very good at family therapy. And what he was one of the first ones to discover is that the things that made for a dysfunctional family, and there are many things, could be very much seen in dysfunctional organizations. And so he had the ability, and he was a wartime veteran. He had been in that deal. Um, he uh, was able to very much take that kind of knowledge and information and bring it into companies in some new and creative ways. 
Um, I don't know if he's still around. <laughs> he's certainly a, an advanced age and stage. His name was George Shapiro, and he was a brilliant man, and he, he took it upon himself to allow me, as I went into uh, advanced training later in life, and gave me some incredible... And that was what he used to say. Remember, no matter how good, there's something wrong with everything. Nothing works all the time. And that's a fact of life. And so here's where I've come to, you know, that means <laughs> that in every organization or in every life, there's a crack. You know, something is missing. <laughs> something isn't there. It, 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 there's a hole. Uh, what is uh, some of the cracks in your life that perhaps need some repairing or filling or closing in some way? What are some of the cracks? Then I get a little bit crude, I guess, but I don't think so. Then the crap. <laughs> There's just some things that we should try and stop doing. Uh, should we still do this? Is this actually good? Is it helpful? Is it useful? Uh, is it really fulfilling our purpose, or is it something that's just hung on? You know, it's. I uh, oftentimes wondered when you hear, like uh, we now hear that uh, Facebook has laid off, and sad for the people because that means if they worked for Facebook, 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 they had some good jobs. You know, they had well-paying jobs. Uh, they've laid off 10,000 people. Now, that's very sad, but what were they doing? <laughs> um, how, how can the company uh, keep going if they no longer have those 10,000 people? Well, did, did they need them? That's always thought is, and some of the things we are doing, maybe we shouldn't do them anymore. Maybe they're not working. And uh, without getting, as I said, too crude, it, yeah, well, it's, let's get rid of the crap. <laughs> let's just get rid of it, not do it anymore. That doesn't mean we make judgments that it's evil or bad or the people are evil or bad, but it's not working for us the way we want it to. And so I'm doing that, and part of what has gone into the, you know, the, the crap is some good stuff. Uh, I like it, I enjoy it, but you know what? My life and my time is limited, and that's something I'm going to have to stop doing. It's just, it's not as important or as vital as some other things. And so, uh, kind of fill the cracks, kind of get rid <laughs> of some of the crap, and then say, okay, now what should I create that's new and different going forward? Fill the crap. <laughs> fill the cracks. I can't talk today. Fill the cracks, you know, get rid of the crap, and then what should I start to perhaps create this summer? Something new. Something that will be more useful to the people I seek to serve and for me. So that's my thought for this Memorial Day weekend. Take some time to do a little self-reflection, a little self-examination, and uh, see where that leads you. Okay? We're at 14 minutes, and I have just a little closer I would like to add, and then we'll be done, and you can enjoy the weekend. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas, stanhouston at gmail.com. Please invite me into your company, into your organization, because I can help you. I can help you with that cracks, crap, and creating new things. We'll be back.
one of my favorite sayings is uh, been uh, taken over by a lot of people, but actually uh, it came from a wonderful African-American philosopher, preacher, teacher, wonderful man who most people have never heard of. Now, most people in America and around the world have heard of Martin Luther King Jr., the incredibly well-known and the martyr for the civil rights movement. National holiday, Martin Luther King Jr. Assassinated and uh, as he led the movement for uh, uh, civil rights within the American community so that all people of all colors <laughs> would have the same rights and not just those of us who are perhaps in the majority white European congregations and organizations and whatever. Uh, we salute and think of him. But he was mentored by a man named Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman, who was not the social rights activist and he really didn't want to be an activist. He said, I can best serve as the thinker the teacher, the mentor, the coach, the guide, and the spiritual advisor. And he was key, that's important, to many of the men and women who are going to be out on the streets. And I would just encourage you to look him up. I'm reading a book about him, uh, simply called, you know, Fully Alive. And Here's the line. He said, he was asking this and teaching this to young people. He said, hey, uh, many are asking me to help you discover uh, what you should do in your life, in your career, and in your business so that you can truly do something that the world needs. That's what you want to do. You want to do what the world needs. And, of course, have a fulfilling career. And he said, discover what makes you fully alive. Fully alive. Most people aren't. So many of us are truly, to use the other expression, dead men walking. Fully alive. He said, and then do it. Because what the world needs is men and women, maybe even boys and girls, who are fully alive. You're alive. That's a gift. It's a gift every day. What could you do differently going forward where you could begin to say, you know what? This really is making me, I can really feel God's pleasure when I do this. This is what is going to make me fully alive. Well, Professor Howard Thurman has ways for that to happen, so I would encourage you to read about him, and I would encourage you perhaps to read some of the many books and sermons and lectures and talks that he gave. And uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was one who was mentored strongly by him and many, many others. And maybe you should join me, even though he's been gone over 50 years. Uh, he is still fully alive in the lives of other people and in the things that he can teach, you and I who are still gifted with the grace of life yet today. That's the deal for today. I'm Stan Houston. Thank you for listening. If you want to talk to me, reach out to me, uh, argue with me, stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. Go get them. Be fully alive. Do what matters. Perhaps maybe even feel God's pleasure in your aliveness. For now, till next time, bye for now.